I just bought this no-name 2,000 gallon per hour bilge pump, taking it apart. Let's have a look at everything inside. Start with at the back of the motor is the brushes, and that is going to make contact with the commutator right here. So those give power to these. There's little breaks in between. Basically what happens is you put a current across here. It makes this magnetic field, and in the, as it spins, now the next one has the magnetic field and it spins in the next one. And this is how you do this mechanically with a brushed motor. Nowadays, a lot of these are computer controlled brushless motors. That's not the case here, but uh, what can wear out is as these brushes spin against this, they'll actually wear out over time and you can then replace those brushes. Uh, that's one of the wear points on these motors, but I don't think that's how this one would fail. It's a little shim pack here sort of a thrust bearing against that. It's not actually a thrust bearing, but it's just a bunch of little bushings there. Looks like a couple ones made out of Teflon. And the trick is I've got to hold these brushes back just to demonstrate. It's got a spring. You need to keep these both in that position in order to get this guy into place. That might be a bit tricky. Let me see if I can figure that out. That was a bit of an adventure. Let's not disassemble that again. There you go, your commutator is now touching the brushes there. This whole armature is ready to be reinserted back into this casing here. So you can see these two big magnets on the outside and I'm gonna slip this on top of everything here. There's a bearing at the back end there. That's where the armature assembly kind of spins in. And there's those brushes around the commutator right where my thumb is. And this guy with the permanent magnets on the outside, these little um, half circle indents, are going to fit there and there. And the trick is I need to slip this on, but it's magnetic. So the second I do that, it's going to pull this. I might pull it out of the uh, brushes assembly there. So I just want to get a good firm. Ooh, that's very magnetic. We're going to grip on that. Okay. There we go. So now that can spin around. And you can actually hear this rubbing up against that magnet. Like it's dragging against it because it's going to stick to one side or the other. And that is where the front bearing assembly comes in. So there's just a, a bearing in here, slides down this shaft. See if I have this on the correct orientation or not. Perhaps not. There we go. So that goes on this way. And there's two bolts that go through this all the way down the side. And there's basically, instead of nuts, they're just sort of tapped into this back plate here. But the way that lines up is between each permanent magnet. There's a little spot on each side. And that is where this is going to slide down and sandwich your DC brushed motor together. Where is that? It's right there. Line it up like that. Just going to very loosely snug one side up. And you can see it coming in the back side. So this can rotate a little bit. I want to make sure we're sort of centered in there. And give these a snug. This shaft goes all the way through. Bearing on this end is a bearing on that end. It spins freely. You can feel each pole moving around. So it goes about that far at a time and then that far at a time. Nice and smooth. We're all back together. But this motor is not at all waterproof. There's three points where water can get into this motor, and if it were to get in, I imagine it would help corrode these bearings and cause them to seize up. So we want to keep water out. 
at the back end of the motor, the only thing keeping water into this case is this little rubber bushing. There seems to be a little bit of grease between the wires and the bushing, but then between the bushing and this outer shell here, right there where I'm pointing, this just sort of goes into here and gets pulled out there. You can see it sort of taper fit, so it snugs into place. This wasn't even fully pulled out and, and snug when I found this. So I'm going to make sure that I, I grease this a little bit, pull it through so it's right snug where it should be, and I'm even going to add some silicone seal. I might sand around this to make sure that the, the adhesive actually sticks to whatever this plastic is. But I'm going to add a little extra silicone here because that is basically an open invitation for water to leak into this system from the back side, even if the two seals on this side were to uh, remain good. With this just loosely fit inside there, this piece is coming out. I need to pull not just on the wires, but on this bushing itself in order to get it to pop into place. With this rubber bushing back in place, that was a little tricky to get in, and I had some of the grease from the inside on my fingers so that sort of greased this into position. So that might keep water out fairly well, but I'm gonna wipe all of the grease off really well and actually silicone around this just to be doubly safe. The whole motor assembly can kind of move freely around inside, as you can see. This piece here has a little rim around the outside, which touches that black rubber seal out there. And then you've got your shaft seal in the middle, which has some grease on it. There's a pin here, and you gotta line that pin up with one of these two holes or it won't fully seat. Let me try to get that around the indents on the shaft. And there, that's the little hole. So this is now pressed in, and now everything's solid. So this just spins, it's held into place and connected to this outer unit. That is sealed, that is sealed, that is sealed, and those are the three ways water can get in. I suspect if I silicone this, the only thing to worry about is water coming in here, so I might want to make sure that I add a little extra grease from the inside to make sure that this is a little extra sealed. But it came like this, it came a little bit greased, and we're going to see how well that lasts. This can still slide up and out, but before we lock that into place, here's the stock impeller. This is what I want to play with. This is an open face design, looks like it's made out of possibly nylon, and there's just a little flat where it'll match up with the flat on the shaft. So we're going to slide that down there, a little C-clip here, and we'll just pop that around into place. That keeps the impeller from coming out, but the whole unit can still move around. That's where this piece, so your impeller is in the middle and the volute is on the outside. If you've seen like a keen P90 pump, it looks like a turbocharger. This is just a circle. So that could potentially be improved upon. You've got this little hole where it spins around and shoots out in the correct direction. That lines up with this outer casing here. And the depth of this circle that I'm running my finger along, that pushes in all the way around the outside here and actually presses this up against that seal and that keeps that outside seal waterproof. So if I was to 3D print just an impeller and test that out, I just pop this off and back in. If I wanna change the entire volute, I'm gonna to have to take some precise measurements of all these holes and 3D print one of these in order to get a little bit fancier. But for now, I'm just gonna put this together. That slips in there. I've got six little screws here that just tap into the plastic. Get everything started by hand to make sure nothing is cross-threaded and just spin these in. I'll do the final torque by hand with a screwdriver. You can see there's a little gap around the outside and that is this pressing up against that rubber seal on the inside. So you actually tighten this into that rubber seal. I'm just gonna work my way around and then work around a second time Maybe I'll even do the star pattern so as to keep the torque fairly even. Everything is nice and snugged up. There's your inlet, there's your outlet. I believe this is a 29 millimeter or one and one eighth of an inch. Just slip the bilge hose over that. And then this guy right here, 
It's basically just a screen, snaps on, and there it is, a 2,000 gallon per hour bilge pump. This happens to be a no-name, really, really cheap. I'm going to compare this thing to a Seaflow brand, which is about twice the price, and I'm not rich enough to test this up against a rule, but I would really like to see, is a, you know, well over $100 rule, 2,000 gallon per hour bilge pump, built in the same way. If you have an old one in your boat that has died and you live somewhere around Sydney, Australia, reach out to me and uh, send me your old broken one and I will take it apart.